Establish your battlefield control. Stand by. Hello everyone, and today I'm going to be talking about the wonderful game called Renegade Act. This will be the game we will be using for our upcoming tournament. First off, to get the people who wants to just simply know the prize and how to sign up, just let me tell you. You'll be able to sign up by clicking the link in the description to head to the Google form. The winning team will receive a grand total of $25 Steam cards purchased from all the help we received from our community. Alright, let's begin talking about the game. I will be going over different vehicles, characters, and a few tips and strategies to hopefully keep all the newbies from recklessly breaking down the team. There are a total of two different teams, one being of the GDI and the other being Nod. The first game to introduce this was Command & Conquer Gold Edition, being the first of the series. The Nod forces were considered the villains, with horrible ambitions, and the GDI forces were there to stop them, being the opposing army. These two fought in Africa. Nod focuses on specialized weaponry and vehicles, such as the stealth tank, flame tank, and other unique yet reliable vehicles. GDI focuses on pure firepower, creating better artillery, mammoth tanks, and medium tanks, which all do more damage than any Nod vehicle. Two can be identified by their different emblems, this one being GDI, and this other one being Nod. Personally, I love playing on Nod's side, as it just seems more fun in general. Well, it's time to get on inside the game. Starting off on Nod's side, I'm going to show you the different vehicles that Nod has. The first vehicle I will be talking about is the Nod Buggy, being the lowest costing one that most people will probably buy in the early game. It's stronger against infantry, fast, but very fragile. The second one is the APC, also known as the Armored Personal Carrier. Multiple people can ride this, charging into the enemy base. A planful rush can lead to the enemy losing an essential part of their base. The third one will be the Artillery. Powerful yet weak. It's strong but needs to be defended. It's also very slow. The Light Tank has light armor, powerful cannon, is also very high in mobility. While it's not stronger than the medium tank that the GDI forces have, it is still cheaper and more maneuverable. The Flame Tank uses two specialized cannons to fire giant flames out of their barrels murdering all tanks and players in their sight. The Stealth Tank uses new active technology to completely turn itself invisible, hiding itself from the enemy. It's powerful with two locking on missiles, however, if it is found, it could be easily destroyed. It's still weaker than the medium tank, however, it can be spotted if you're at close proximity of the enemy, so you need to be careful and also stay away, as you're not completely invisible. However, it's still very well used in rushes. The next thing I'll be talking about is the transport helicopter, attached with two giant miniguns to mow down any enemies in their path to hopefully have a successful landing around the enemy base or wherever their location for where it is going. The Apache helicopter attached with a giant minigun ready to mow down any enemy that stands by it and missile launchers to mow down tanks. As long as it flies above, they'll have trouble eating their cannons up and they can be protected. However, be wary of anti-air defenses from the enemy side as they'll give you a nasty blow and you'll crash and burn down to the ground. Moving along here, you can see the Tiberium silo which you are able to capture with an engineer. And to the right of it will be the Tiberium ore which the harvester collects standing on it will damage you. This is the Harvester. Destroying the enemy Harvester will prevent them from getting resources. This is valuable in the beginning of the game and you must protect your own also. Let's talk about enemy base defenses. GDI have the Guard Tower which is a machine gun. As you can see when it just shoots at me it does quite a bit of damage. You need to defeat these at a long range in order to defeat so you could easily progress into the next area. If you don't, they're going to be a hassle and really, really halt your objective to defeat the enemy and destroy all the bases within. They also have an advanced guard tower, which is much stronger and it defeats even the strongest of tanks within seconds. You really need to destroy it before you can progress. This is an anti-air tower. The GDI have these, while well, the Nodges have some sites. You have to destroy these before you can use air in the enemy base. Let's talk about the enemy base. The refinery 
is what gives you your resources. Destroying the refinery prevents their harvester from ever collecting again, thus making it so they don't get resources. The barracks is what lets you purchase special troops. These special troops really help in combat and are much stronger than the original free troops. However, you can always change to the free troops no matter what time it is. So even if the barracks is destroyed, at least they give you some leeway where you still get some troops. This is the War Factory. Destroying the War Factory prevents them from building vehicles and it really changes the way the game plays. You have to use special characters in order to defeat your tanks and if you destroy their barracks, they're pretty much gone. All you have to do is just overrun them. And then, you know, that's when rushing with tanks really becomes an issue for the enemy team. And then that's all you have to worry about. There is a power plant, but it's not shown here. Let's talk about GDI vehicles. This is their Humvee, same as the buggy. Their chin hook, it's pretty much the exact same. Their APC looks a little bit different, I also like it better. Instead of the artillery, they have the missile launcher that fires multiple missiles. Here's the medium tank, which is stronger than the light tank on the nod side. Then the mammoth tank, which is their special unit, giant, big, does a lot of damage, heals by itself, has anti-air missiles. It's, it's just a great vehicle in general. And then if you want to talk about the Orca, the Orca is basically the Apache. It's not much different, it has the same specs, you know, all that fun stuff.